Mm-hmm. Welcome to Biblical Brawlers Podcast, where we teach the truth and unteach the garbage. And there's a lot of garbage being eaten up out there these days. Well, I am not Derek Drury. I am John Whitaker. And I am Derek Drury. And we're the pastors of New Day Christian Fellowship, a church right in the heart of the inner city of Springfield, Ohio. We are reformed in our theology, which means that we want to bring the church back to where it belongs, and that is back to the Bible. Now, tonight we're going we're gonna to talk about um, some very familiar words, a very familiar scripture that people use a lot. And these words probably sound very familiar to everyone out there. The words, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Well, we're good. We got three. Yep. We're, all, we're, we're good to go. That's right. <laughs> good thing we don't have four. I know. We'd have a problem. <laughs> Uh, well, more than likely, um, to to the viewers out there, there is a good chance that uh, um, you are among the vast majority of Christians that have used this scripture completely out of context. Um, it doesn't make you a horrible person or or a big fat loser or anything like that. But I mean, we've very... we've, ne- we've never done that. Right? No, no, yeah, yeah. okay. Never done anything sure. out of context at all, ever. <laughs> <laughs> but it is indeed very important that people understand Absolutely. what is actually being said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So the last couple of weeks we've we've spoken on uh, biblical illiteracy, and I, I think this is a good follow up to those kind of it in practice. Mm-hmm. You know, because we we talked about the importance of it. Um, but this is kind of a practical application of, of why it's so important and why you have to take um, the totality of Scripture in context uh, of what God's Word is saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. As we were saying before, it's like a situation, like every situation in, when it comes to the Bible, it's like we are to do our best to uh, study, to understand the context of God's Word. And with that said... Uh, we want to look a little bit more into the passage that that we took out of Matthew just a second ago that we just said, you know, where two or three gathered, that's Matthew chapter 18, uh, verses 20, verse 20. But we want to back up a little bit to get the real context of, of what he is actually saying. Uh, so Matthew uh, 18, John, you want to read that? I can. The um, It's big enough this week for me to actually read the words, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. <clears throat> If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen, even to the church, let him be to you as the Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed, loosened, loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them, for my Father is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. So okay. let's start here with a question. Why is it important that we know the context of this passage? And why isn't it okay to just let folks believe that God shows up when at least two or three Christians get together? Um, so why isn't it okay to just let people say, okay, you know, um, God shows up. All of a sudden, when two or three Christians get together, and that's good enough, you know, and uh, they, they say that, and the understanding just stops right there. Well, answering it is actually quite simple because first of all i want people to understand that this is not a verse that if you misunderstand it that you're going to go to hell for for doing that with this one but there are some serious implications that are involved with the under different understandings of this verse now yeah i I think where i see this verse the most uh, it's it's a lot of times it's at the beginning of church gatherings. Um, there's a pastor up on stage and, you know, he's saying it's just so good to be together because he was like, I just remember the verse where two or, where two or more are gathered, you know, and yeah. and yeah. and and it's really not. 
it's out of context, but it's, it's not heresy, right? You know, he's not wrong. God, mm -hmm. God is there, but like, like you're saying, there's, there's some context there. There's, um, some, some things that we have to dig into that if you just take those words in themselves, that there's some implications that, that, that go there and they're, and they're, they're pretty huge. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, one understanding of this and, and the understanding that is usually used is, uh, Hey guys, all we need is two or three peeps for God to show up, you know? And that is what, I mean, it, it's, it's not like 50, 50 down, down the middle. Like this is a context that is taken out of, or a, a verse that is taken out of context. I mean, far and wide all the time, all the time, all the time from in people's homes to, uh, just walking around to, to at the pulpit, like you just said, you know, to small groups, to prayer mm -hmm. groups, to, to, to prayer meetings and, and Bible study groups is, it is so often, uh, taken out of context and, and that, Hey guys, all we need is two or three, uh, people for God to show up. Um, most people don't actually realize that this could be very problematic if you live alone. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you just happen to be home alone on a certain day and your family is out or if your family is gone to school and work the morning and you happen to be uh, home a little bit later and you, you are alone uh, praying by yourself, that could be problematic. You know, if you're camping by yourself, some people do that. Yeah. Uh, I've never gone camping by myself, but some people do camp by themselves. What are you going to do? You know, uh, what if you're just doing yard work? What if you're out mowing the yard and weed whacking and, and such, you know, uh, and, and you're talking to the Lord? Is God just folding his arms and shaking his head like, nope, not going to do it. Right. You know, not going to yeah. do it. It's almost like God, like, if you think of it like that, it's like God's just just waiting for two or three people to gather so he can show up. Yeah. Like, like, mm -hmm. like, like we're we're in control of when God shows up. Like, yeah, that, that's that's not the case. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, w along with that, then we have to go to the point of where Matthew six, six, you know, what, what do we do with what Jesus says there? You know, it says Matthew six, six, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. Some, some translations even say, go into your closet, you know, <laughs> uh, it, 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 where it, in secret. And so at this point, do you have to take a friend with you? Mm hmm. You know, do, do you do you have to take a friend into your closet? Do you have to take a friend into the into your room with you? And if that is the case or if you think that's the case, you could actually find yourself in some inappropriate situation that, that you don't want to find yourself into. And, you know, and, and, and two, why would Jesus tell you to go and do that and be alone in your room or your closet if he isn't going to be there with you? Yeah, that would be pretty mean. Yep. <clears throat> and. uh Examples like this, like sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll take these examples to a ridiculous level. And I know that these are ridiculous, but if you want to look at this passage in the correct way, like any, pa any passage, then you have to take the understanding all the way to the logical conclusion. And yep. what is the logical conclusion um, in this particular passage? What's it saying? What is the proper understanding? Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people even probably listening to this podcast, they're going to be kind of surprised about what the context mm -hmm. of this is. Because yeah. um, I, I know the, the, I mean, I would say definitely the first time I, I read that verse, I was, I was probably in the camp of, I, that's, that's right. You know, we're in a worship gathering. God is showing up. We, he's in our midst. He's, he's here because we're, we're gathering together. Yeah. But then when you read it in its full context, you actually realize it's actually dealing with Biblical church discipline. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, that's the big D word you know, <laughs> in, in, in the Bible that, that churches and church leaders, they, they kind of shy away from. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so, but the church, the congregations love to be taught about church discipline. Oh yeah. So why yes. do pastors not <laughs> right. I don't know what about, they're, you know, what, they're what is of. the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people just flock to hear sermons about church discipline, yep. you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but in every situation, when you back up and you take more than just verse 20, you back up to at least verse 15 through 20, then you see what the context is. Mm -hmm. And the context is to be taken within the confines of the local church. 
Um, and, and oddly enough, that is a, a sore subject among Christians as well to say, you know, these things are in the confines of the local church, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, well, that could be a whole another podcast talking about the, yeah. the context of um, <laughs> our, our, our local church community. Um, but this, uh, <clears throat> this particular context is, is dealing with sin that has been committed um, that has to be dealt with by the church. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it talks about, I mean, first off going to, you know, your, your fellow believer. And if he doesn't listen, you know, you, you bring another, um, and then you, you bring the leadership of the church in. Um, but that's the context of what he's talking about where, where two or more are gathered. God is going to be with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's this, this particular context is it, like you're saying, you know, it's like, it's bringing them before the church leadership, and when the church leadership comes together, not just like one guy, not just the preaching pastor of a church, you know, or not just, hey, this is the elder that deals with all of this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's like the elders come together prayerfully and they take care of the sin that's being spoken of here and deal with it in a biblical and godly manner. Uh, then God will bless the decision and back them up on it. If mm -hmm. two or three come together before the Lord and earnestly dealing with these things in order to teach the people, correct the people, the church, uh, and particularly, of course, and to keep the peace among the body, then, then the Lord is in agreement with them. And this brings out the proper and much better understanding. And, uh, and, and that is, that's why it's not okay to just let people go with it. It's not mm -hmm. just okay to leave people to say, Hey, we're two or three gathered together. Right. You know? So, I mean, kind of what you said there, uh, that uh, when when we gather two or three and we, we're prayerfully, God God blesses that. So that so that means that uh, all these situations go uh, very smoothly, right? Yes. So they 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 have the mm -hmm. um, the ending that uh, that we that we want and we're in agreement with. Yeah. 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 We're, we're just in there. Yeah. You're right. Yes, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not only do people love sermons about it, they love to be corrected, you know, and, yes. <laughs> and we can all understand that as human beings, you know, like none of us like the Bible even talks about when God, you know, in Hebrews, when, when God is chastising and discipline his children, it never feels good at the time, right. you know, and it's like when the church is disciplining uh, the people in the body, man, that doesn't feel good. You know, and, and our natural reaction, most of us, our natural reaction is to go, who are you? Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're not God, you know, and then, and then the church leaders, if they're, if they're humble and really trying to honor God, they're like, oh, look, we know that we're, we're nobody in our own flesh to stand before you and come. We know that it could be us even dealing with this or fall, have fallen into this you know, walked into this particular sin or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, but there's a, there's a, a, a time, uh, that most of us throughout the church, if probably all of us at some point should have been at least called out in some form of church discipline, mm -hmm. you know, even in a minor way. Um, but like you said earlier, it is so shied away from, yep. you know, and that's that's really sad because since it's been shied away from for so long, that's why it is now such a, a difficult topic uh, to bring up, you know. And and that is something that we should go deeper into in a, in another episode is church discipline and what that looks like, you yeah. know. And uh, but um, it when we talk about a passage like this. Some people's reaction, some people's thought might be, okay, does God really care about our understanding in these particular types of things? Like it's, you, you, we even said, it's not a heaven or hell issue necessarily. So does God really care? Yeah, ab yeah. I think absolutely he cares. Um, he cares about the context of his, his, his scripture. Um, scripture is... We know it's it's God breathed, it's perfect, it's it's unwavering, it doesn't contradict itself. And when we take it out of context, we start to contradict it. And that and that especially to people that don't know the word, that that starts to undermine mm -hmm. the the authority of the word. Yeah. You know, so like if 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 you're talking to a non believer, 
you know, and you're saying where two or more are gathered, logically, I mean, yes, if, if it's, it's one thing talking to a Christian mm -hmm. that, that knows that, well, I know that God's still with me if it's when, but right. if you're talking to a non-Christian or someone that's on the fence or someone or, or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, they, they hear where two or more are gathered. They're like, okay, well then when I'm at home, when I'm alone, when, I mean, let's face it, when we're alone, those, those, that's some of the darkest times. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally and figuratively, you right. know, when we're in the, the, the confines of our own minds, yeah, that can be the, the, the scariest place. I mean, that's where depression happens. That's where, mm -hmm. um, just, I mean, a lot of bad thoughts creep in. Yeah. Um, I think that's where Satan attacks, mm -hmm. you know, um, and for a new Christian to, to hear that, um, I mean, yes, we, we want to gather as a body as, oh, as, yeah. mu as, as much as, as much as we possibly can. But if God really wasn't with us when we're alone, like we, we should all move in together. Like, we, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we all need to get to like, just yeah. move into the church together. Every <laughs> single person, you know, yeah. we, we don't want to be where God is not. Right. Right. Um, so just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, um, you know, and, and, and it can also be a, a, another topic. We, we continually bring up new topics that we'll go, uh, oh, we'll go deeper into that <laughs> later. But then you go into the topic of, of home churches, you know, mm -hmm. and and that scripture will be used over and over again. We don't need to be involved in the local church as an institution, you know, uh, that is ordained by God. We we just need to be where there's two or three of us gathered in the home church in our living room, mm -hmm. you know, and not the home churches are bad or anything like that, but, but it really isn't proper and biblical if it's aside from the local church community, you know, I mean, of course, unless you're on an Island, there are geographical reasons as to why some people can't be involved in a local <laughs> church community. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, if you're Robinson Crusoe out, you <laughs> know, and he couldn't be, yeah. you know, don't don't you hate though that we have to give so many caveats? It it is. I do, man. I, I do. Um, you really. I don't see caveats in the Bible, right? I, I don't think, and we do give a lot of caveats. Yeah. And you know, we we want to be sensitive to those because mm -hmm. there are there there are situations um, where, but it's just it just seems like any time that we give a hard truth, like we we. We feel obligated to back it up, but well, but not in this situation, not mm -hmm. in this, you know, because I mean, let's face it. Otherwise, we're going to get people coming up to us after that we say those mm -hmm. hard truths and they're going to tell us, yeah, but my uncle lives in an island on in South Africa by himself. <laughs> like <laughs> invariably, you'll get somebody. <laughs> right. That, you yeah. Know, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you do. You go. <laughs> I hate giving caveats, but here's my caveat here, right? Now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you get the, the fast speaking, you know, fine print at the end mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the, like the micro machine guy back in the 80s and 90s for the, you know, the older people that might remember those commercials. But that's, yeah, we do. Nope. It, it, no you don't, you don't remember that. Time. I, Man, I I'm only know. like seven years older than you. Right. Uh, but like 30 years wiser. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, uh, <laughs> that's another topic for another podcast yeah. as well, folks. No. <laughs> Uh, but what, what we do want to know, want to let people know is again, speaking of caveats, you know, we do want people to, to know our hearts in, in why we are doing this podcast and why we bring up these hard teachings and we're trying to be sensitive. Like you just said, yet at the same time, this is needed, you mm -hmm. know? And of course we're not the only ones out there doing a podcast like this, you know, but, but it is so needed and the more uh, people doing things like this, hey, praise the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, but um, uh, if we if we continue to just sit by and let the method of pastors just reading a verse, or if we're lucky, taking a few verses, reading it, then... Um, out of context and just taking carte blanche on what it means on what they think it means, you know, and then feeding that to the sheep. If that method is okay, then, then why even study the Bible at all? Mm -hmm. You know, why, why even have pastors? And it's a really legit question. It is. Why have pastors and Bible teachers? Yeah. And it's a legit question. And like you said, we're, we, 
we want to come out this in in humility and love and not that we're the only right ones like you said there's a lot of other people out here you know um fighting the same fight that that that, that we're fighting but there are let's face it especially in the american church there are there are a lot of churches that they are not digging not only are their pastors not digging into the context the people that go to those churches the the congregants the um, the members of that church, they, they take what the pastor says, whatever he feeds them, and they're not backing them up. They're not, they're not going to go, okay, let's, let's, let's dig into what, mm -hmm. what he said. I mean, that's so yeah. important. Goes back to what we talk about first two episodes, yeah. biblical, biblical literacy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so that's, that's so <clears throat> huge. Like it, 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 and it, it's, it does start with the pastors, but it, it ends with us as, as believers, mm -hmm. you know, like we we need to be in in the word so we know what's in context and what's what's out of context. Yeah. If we're not if we're not in the word, we're not we are not going to know what's in context and what's not. If we're not in the word, the pastor can get up, go up there and spin it whatever way he wants to. And the crowd goes wild. Yep. You know. Yeah, and, and you hear a lot of times, you know, people say, "Well, I'm not a theologian." You hear pastors say, "Well, I'm not a theologian." Well, every pastor should be a theologian and every Christian should be a theologian. Amen. This is not something that is just put to certain pastors, you know, mm -hmm. well, they've reached their, they've, they've got a tenure now, <laughs> you know, and, and so all of a sudden he is a theologian and, you know, it, it, this is something that every Christian should be striving for mm -hmm. to be a theologian, you know, uh, how I'm, Oh, I'm I'm no expert, you know, and there are right. things that we're not experts in for yeah. sure. And we don't know everything biblically, you know, mm -hmm. um, but there is a lot that God has given us to know exactly what he meant, exactly yep. what he is saying. And when you look in the context of it and in and when you look at two or three are gathering light bulbs go off, you know, mm -hmm. and no doubt there'll be people, some people, hopefully anyways, we, we pray watching this episode that'll go, Oh, I'd never realized that, mm -hmm. but hopefully it will excite them to know the true context yeah. instead of going, but I like the other one better. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I, and, and we hope too, that you, you hear this and you're just like, you're not like, Oh yeah. Let's let's take their word for. It. I mean, I I hope they open up their Bibles and and read the. I don't know how many times that we I've taken a scripture. I'm like, okay, let's let's get this in proper context. So it's like you have to read the the full chapter. Then you're like, okay, well, actually, I need to read the the previous. <laughs> let's chapter. just start at Genesis <laughs> today. <laughs> um, so I mean, it it's not always it's not always easy. I mean, to to get the full context. I mean, yeah. just just taking that that small like where two or three are gathered. I mean, that's that's a little more palatable. That's a little yes. more like, hey, let's let's take those words and 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 put it on a screen. Let's put it on our t-shirts. You yeah. know, let's let's get people pumped up. Yes, you pastors know. <laughs> can make some powerful Absolutely. messages, but they're really they're not sermons. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're uh, motivational messages is what comes. I mean, everything can get turned into a motivational speech. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, if, if you know how to spin it, you yep. know, but, yeah, but, uh, last question I would ask is first, let me just say this. God does care that we know what his word is saying. He does care very much. Um, but my last question would be. If we do not understand the context of the text in, Bibli in, in the Bible, how do we rightly divide the word? It's not possible. It's not possible. It yeah. can't. We, we have to know it in its, in its full context. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. It's, and it's, in its full context is the entire Bible. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all 66 books. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, and today it is a royal rumble trying to get people to even want to understand properly. Mm -hmm. But it is worth fighting, not against people, yep. but fighting for the truth of the biblical, godly, Christ-like way. Being a biblical brawler.
maybe being a biblical brawler. Hey, that's a good name for a podcast. Hey, let's do that. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it, man. <laughs> well, God bless you all. We love you. Thank you so much for listening and watching. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. All right.